Hey. Thank you, Mickey. Thank you so much. You know, I'm an advertising guy. Ad men don't get honored, you know? <laughs> We're the guys that just make the ads, but I really, truly appreciate this. Uh, Janet, you, you are absolutely the best, you know? When, when, <laughs> you know, when, when Raul Izaguirre stepped down after 30 some odd years of leading the National Council of La Raza, who could there possibly be out there that could fill those shoes? But uh, Raul and everybody that made the decision knew that it was Janet who could do it. And if you've seen her take on people like Lou Dobbs <laughs> and the way that she does it, mm, man, I'm telling you, we are proud of her because she doesn't let him get in his words the way that he wants. It's his podium, but she doesn't let him have it, and she is just amazing, and only you can do that. Janet, thank you so much for being so generous in that introduction. And of course, I want to thank Mickey, who is this amazing, energetic man that can put together uh, people from both sides of the aisle and put them together in a way that they work for each other and that always, always make a better world for our community. Uh, you're, you're, you're unique. I'm so glad that Raul Isaguirre introduced me to you way back then in those Encuentro meetings, Mickey, because uh, we became friends. And uh, although we work on different sides of the, uh, of the parties, it doesn't make any difference. And it doesn't make any difference because it's really f everything that we do together is for the good of our community. Uh, I, I, do, I do get a lot of credit, uh, undeserved, uh, a lot of it because of, I, I've worked in, in seven presidential elections now. This is my seventh. I never thought I'd be this old. <laughs> uh, in 1980 and, and 84 with Ronald Reagan, 88 and 92 with uh, Papa Bush, and then 2000 and 2004 with George W. Bush and now with John McCain. And in every single one of those races, uh, my, my talented and wonderful creative wife has been there, and she's the one that really has the great ideas, and she's the one that get, please, please stand up, Kathy. I think she is one of the most amazing. You know, at that table, too, is, is the people that really uh, do so much of, of the great work, and I want to recognize uh, Mr. Cesar Martinez, who is uh, the man that puts together, stand up, Cesar, if you would. <laughs> he, he, he's been behind the scenes a lot, but now he's in front of the scene, uh, really making things happen in the advertising. Beth Sturgeon, a wonderful, wonderful friend. Leonard Rodriguez, Enoe Garcia. And uh, th this is the team that is really does the work, uh, uh, and the great work, I think, for, for for our nation's leaders. And uh, talking about our nation's leaders, you know, uh, great Senator John McCain is running for president right now. And uh, we were doing a video uh, for him that's, uh, that's gonna be playing at the Republican convention today. And in that video, he says, I learned as much about conservative values from my Latino roommate at the Naval Academy than I did for my parents. And he talks about Latino conservative values in that, uh, in that video. And uh, just a few minutes ago, that uh, man that was his college roommate at the Naval Academy walked in with his wife. His name is Frank Gamboa, and he is with us today. Applause well deserved, Frank. Thank you so much for being here. And his beautiful wife, Linda, thank you for joining us today. You really make this whole 
uh, gathering uh, so special. And uh, we, uh, you know, uh, people ask me, Lionel, why did you become a Republican? You know, I mean, you're a Mexican. You're supposed to be a Democrat. <laughs> well, I'm 69 years old, and the first time we got uh, our, our television set, uh, there were only three networks at the time, uh, ABC, CBS, and NBC. And uh, there wasn't much programming then. The only thing that all three networks were playing were the national conventions. And uh, I heard Dwight Eisenhower make his speech, and he talked about honor, courage, faith, and duty. Honor, courage, faith, and duty. He talked about love of country. He talked about personal responsibility and about family. And he talked about opportunity, making one's own opportunity, and having government get out of the way. A couple of weeks later, uh, I then uh, heard Ed Lai Stevenson, his opponent. And Ed Lai Stevenson talked about how much we needed government to help us out because somehow we couldn't do it for ourselves. And of course, there's a lot of things that government must do for people that can't do for themselves. But somehow, Dwight Eisenhower, that old soldier, and his words resonated to me. And I went and proudly told my parents, when I'm going to be able to vote, I'm going to vote Republican. <laughs> And they said, Dios mío, Lionel, how can you possibly do that? Te vas a ir al infierno. You're going to go to hell. Why? Because you can't be a Republican. You must be a Democrat. Why? Because we're Mexican. We have to be Democrats because we're Mexican? Yes. Any other reasons? Yes, because we're poor. Okay, so we need to be... Democrats because we're Mexicans and because we're poor, does that mean that the Republicans are the rich guys? No. Yes, well, that, they said yes, and I said, yeah, I want to be rich, that's where I want to be. <laughs> and, then, out of the blue, back in 1978, we got a telephone call from John Tower in his office. And they said, uh, we're looking for an advertising agency, and we think you would be just right. Now, we'd never done political advertising, and we'd never done anything on the Hispanic side. And we asked why. Well, because we like your ads, but we've never done it before. That's OK. We think you can do it. Well, we made a presentation. We won the business, and he had a big Latino effort back then, in 1978. It was a long, long time ago, Alma remembers. And uh, it was a, a, a campaign that spent uh, $500,000 in, in, in Hispanic media, which was a lot of money back, back at the time, half a million bucks. Nobody had done that, not any Democrat, and much less a Republican at that time. But John Tower knew that he needed to get the Latino vote. At that time, Latinos voted only about 8% for Republicans. So we did the campaign. He got 37% of the Latino vote, and he won by one half of 1% of the entire vote. That means that the Latino got him reelected as US senator. <laughs> and after that happened, he calls me to his office. He says, Lionel, I need to talk to you. I wonder what he wants, you know, did I did something wrong? Did I overbill him? <laughs> and he said, you know, you were instrumental in helping me get elected, and I want to know, what can I do for you? What can I do for you? I said, I, I, I don't know, Senator. I mean, I just, you, you've, you've just given me the opportunity to work with you, and that's a great honor in itself. He says, no, I want to do something else. I want to do something for you. So he picks up the phone, and he calls his contact at the Wall Street Journal. 
He says, I want you to know the man that helped get me elected and was probably more responsible than anybody else. And I want you to do a story about him. The Wall Street Journal did a story, and I had my little drawing in the Wall Street Journal there. <laughs> Big, half-page story. My world changed at that time. Within three months, Coca-Cola, before, be, before Mr. Becerra was there, <laughs> uh, and uh, Bacardi Rum, uh, and uh, uh, were, were and Coors Beer, Coca-Cola, Bacardi Rum, and Coors Beer became my clients because they saw that article. All of a sudden, I went from being a teeny weeny little nobody agency to being a nationally recognized advertising agency. My accounts, nobody was spending more than $50,000 a year at that time, but Coors came in with a $3 million account, Coca-Cola with a $2 million account, and Bacardi Rum with a $1 million account. All of a sudden, we were big, and we were able to do the work that got us on the map. Why? Because one man opened the door of opportunity. He didn't say, I'm gonna, you, you, you need government to help you. He says, all I'm gonna do is open the door. I'm gonna make a call. And when he did that, I thought, well, what more favors could this man possibly do for me? That he's changed my life. But then he calls again, Lionel, I need to talk to you. Come on over and talk. <laughs> Whoa, what? He says, uh, I need to introduce you to Ronald Reagan. He's going to be the next president of the United States. And he took me over and introduced me to Ronald Reagan. He says, this is the man that needs to do your Hispanic outreach. And Ronald Reagan told me, well, that's going to be easy, Lionel. I said, well, I hope that it is, but tell me why you think it's going to be easy. And he said, because, look, what did your daddy teach you? And then I, I, it came back to me, those words that Eisenhower, you know, family, hard work, personal responsibility, patriotism, love of country, honor, duty. That's what he taught you. That's what we're all about. All you have to do is communicate that. And as long as you do that, you're going to be just fine. And in 30 seconds, he gave me that whole entire strategy that uh, we've been using ever since. That we've been using ever since. And we don't change it all too much because it really resonates not only with uh, candidates, but also with, uh, with the Latino community. And you know, this year though, it's gonna be very different because uh, although uh, Gore didn't spend hardly any money courting the Latino vote in 2000, and Kerry didn't spend any money courting the Latino vote in 2004, Barack Obama is a lot smarter. He's a lot smarter. And I would not be surprised if the spending on his part to court the Latino vote will go over 30 million. I will not be one bit surprised. He's already committed $20 million for Latino voter outreach and another 10 to another $20 million in the media is going to be very easy for him. So we've gone now from having absolutely no competition in the media to having the best competition ever. And Barack Obama is hiring uh, the best people that he can, wonderful people. And you know what, that's okay. Because for the very first time, both parties, both parties, are aggressively wanting our vote. <laughs> Democrats are no longer standing by and saying, uh, we don't have to do anything, we've got them in our hip pocket. And Republicans, uh, as Republicans, we're gonna have to step up and we're gonna do better than we've ever done before. We have to or we're not gonna gain any advantage at all. In fact, we really hope that we are able to, to match what George W. Bush did in an environment that's gonna be very, very different. So I just 
have to say that I'm so so honored uh, to to be in this same place with you, and so honored to have a seat here or share the stage with uh, my good friend Henry Bonilla, whom I admire so much, and I devoted several pages in my first book on, about his story because it is so inspirational. And uh, and I thank all of you for being here today. And uh, Mickey, muchísimas gracias por todo lo que haces.